The NASDAQ market is down 4%. What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBit Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having an amazing Tuesday. We live streamed on my YouTube channel today, this morning, right when the CPI data report came out. If you guys didn't watch it, but you want to see how the market reacted live, then make sure you click the first link in the description. And I made sure that I posted it there for you so you can see exactly how we prepared for it. Now, I was holding 5,000 shares of TQQQ, but during the pre-market session, I decided to lock in profits and sell 3,000 of those shares. And you'll see, during that live stream, I went from yesterday of having over 20,000 shares in TQQQ after I made $26,000 yesterday alone, and today I reduced my position to 2,000 shares because that's how uncertain I was of the CPI data report. The report came out, the market sold off, and I am so grateful for managing my risk by managing my position size. This is something that we always talk about, that again, our job is never to predict the future, our job is to prepare for it. But let's talk about why is the market selling off? If the CPI report came out lower than the previous month, why is the market dropping? This is probably a question that a lot of you guys might have. This is the CPI data report. This is an inflation report and it's month over month and it pretty much just tracks inflation for you know consumer goods. Overall CPI came in at 8.3%. Based off of the previous month, it was 8.5% and the month prior was 9.1%. So from 9.1 to 8.5 to now 8.3%. Well, that means that inflation is going down. So why is the market dropping? It's not about overall CPI, but it's about core CPI. And this is the part that I've talked about so many times, and I know I have on my channel. For two months in a row, I brought it up last week. For two months in a row, core CPI was at 5.9 and at 5.9%. You guys can see right here. Two months in a row for the month of June and the month of July, 5.9 and 5.9%. Now, what is core CPI? Core CPI is everything except food and energy. The reason food and energy is removed from core CPI is because the Federal Reserve cannot influence or it, yeah, really, it, they can't influence anything about food prices and or oil prices. Those are like, um, you know, variables that they cannot control. With that being said, they came up with the idea of core CPI. By raising interest rates, they know that they can influence those specific areas. And if they've been raising interest rates more now than they have been in the past 40 years with those three quarter of a percent interest rate hikes, and they see that core CPI not only isn't dropping anymore, but as of the month of what was reported today for September and as of the month of August, we could see that core CPI actually came in at 6.3%. That is why the market is dropping. Let me make it super clear. The reason the market is dropping is because core CPI came in higher than the previous two months. And core CPI is the only area where the actual Federal Reserve can influence that specific area. And I can go a little bit more into detail when it comes down to, you know, uh, what areas saw a drop. You can see that overall CPI, we saw a drop in gasoline, we saw an, a drop in energy commodities, which is great. But it's in the core areas where we didn't see a drop. We actually saw that rise. And this is exactly why the market is dropping. Core CPI is not good. So now let, let, let's go ahead and think about this domino effect. First off, congratulations to uh, everyone that went into SQQQ. Direction is in your favor. I still, as of right now, think that it's a little bit more on the overbought side. And you'll see, if you click that first link down below, you'll see that during that live session, when the market was selling off, they were asking me, how much do you think the market could sell off? I was like, it would not surprise me if SQQQ has a 12 or 14% day. Why? Look at every previous history of a CPI data report. Those are the only times that SQQQ has ever had a 12 or 14% day. The only time. Right now, the NASDAQ market is down 4%. That is significant. I think that's only happened like three or four times this year in, in one day. It's important to pay attention to history, right? So with that being said, why is this a concern? Well, what's to follow after a CPI data report or an inflation report? The Federal Reserve have, has their FOMC meeting, right? And this is where they decide the interest rate hike. What do you think if the Federal Reserve sees that core CPI, the area that they could influence is not dropping, but it's actually rising. 
What do you think they are going to do? Are they going to be more aggressive with raising interest rates? Or are they going to be more lenient? What has the Federal Reserve said from the very beginning? They are approaching this head on. They are hawkish. They want to front load interest rates. So if they see that core CPI came in higher than expected and shows that that has not peaked, that is only another reason that would support a larger interest rate hike. And this is why we are seeing the market drop. It's the domino effect of what was reported today. CPI came in, core CPI higher than expected. Federal Reserve, they can justify being more aggressive. We will only know when they have that federal FOMC meeting. I will be live streaming that here on my YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you drop a thumbs up. But that is why we're seeing the market drop. The market sentiment right now is bearish. The market is selling off. This is why SQQQ is rising. Now, direction can always change. I still think that during an uncertain time, it's a great time to prepare for a market recovery. But that's just me. The simple question is, can you tolerate the time that it will take for the market to recover, even if things get worse before they get better? And how do you do that? Position size, position size, position size. This is why I want you to watch today's video because of how excited I got when the market dropped because of how lightly I was invested in TQQQ. It excited me because I understood that I can get it for a good deal. And I understand that markets always end up recovering. It's simply, can I tolerate the time it will take for them to recover? That's what I want you to be reminded. SQQQ is not an investment vehicle. It's not something that's going to rally for a long period of time. Understand the difference of a trade versus a position that's actually worth holding. Now is the time to prepare, not because it can't get any cheaper, but because deals are presenting themselves. And that's what's most important. Um, so again, if you have any questions, I hope that you know you, that you could either comment down below or if you want to make sure that you direct message me, send me a direct message via Discord. And that's that first link in the description or send me a direct message via Instagram. And that's that third link in the description. Friendly reminder. If you liked the live stream from today, that is very similar to being able to watch me trade live every single day. I trade live exclusively with my Learn Plan Profit Group. And again, they get to watch me trade live every day. They get access to the A to Z video lesson library. They get access to our private group chat and they get access to my TechBuds HQ. It's all inclusive. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. And ask yourself a simple question. Would it be of value for you to be able to watch me trade live every single day the market opens? And that's exactly what we do within LPP, right? So if so, click that second link. If not, if, if you're not ready to join our team, then again, just make sure that you stay subscribed. Like always, guys, continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be what drives your success. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.